Hey, this is Dayton, and as you're about to hear, my audio specifically is very bad this episode. Our streaming software decided to record using my webcam microphone rather than my normal microphone, and as a result, the quality is significantly reduced. I've already went ahead and I made the changes, so the remaining two weeks of the bullshit bracket will be back up to our normal audio quality that you expect from the EWF podcast. I just want to say thanks for understanding, and hopefully it doesn't detract too much from the fun that we had during round one. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Engineers Out Filters podcast, episode 110. And if you clicked on this, you know what's up. It's the Bullshit Bracket, season two, baby. Uh, and uh, I'm your host, Jacob Thompson. And I'm going to just start off by introducing the participants in this year's Bullshit Bracket. Before I start dating, I'm getting a little bit of an echo from somewhere. Actually, I know what it is. Never mind. <laughs> it was my fault. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm not seeing any echoes on on anybody. <laughs> I had stream up and I'm like, why am I? Here? It's quiet. Oh, All right. Same thing. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I've got to get this done. All right, here we go. Yeah, I'm. Number eight. I think on one second. Hang on one second, Jacob. Damn it, Dave. Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. I am. I am fixing the audio right now. It's. It's. Uh. It's. Yeah. So let me just bump that up real quick. Cool. All right, that should be that should be better now. But the levels are bumped. Yes, I think so. Properly bumped. Properly proper bumpage going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, here we go. In the number eight seat, his hobbies include cooking, mountain biking, and giving Gabe topics for the podcast. <laughs> He's basically just a better version of Gabe. It's Tim Graham. <laughs> you fucking wrote that? <laughs> up? I'm Tim, and uh, I'm drinking a Bell's Official. Very solid choice. I like it. In the number seven seed, he's a dark horse. No one knows what his true potential is. He's a fellow material scientist, part-time Rocket League pro, and the second <laughs> man I know. My friend, Alex Perk. Perkins! None of those things you said are correct. <laughs> um, I, I got uh, Surly Hell. Oh, okay. It's all in the numbers. In the, in the number six spot, she's no stranger to the podcast, last appearing on episode 10, exactly 100 episodes ago. She used Joseph as a springboard to become best friends with the rest of us. It's the wonderful, <laughs> the amazing Cece Arce. I'm drinking, I'm drinking some H2. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the number five seed is someone you know well. He loves blueberries, beer, and long walks on the beach. It's a lanky boy who won't cut his hair. Joseph, the Grand Champ. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm drinking Dogfish Head's Liquid Truth Serum IPA. Goes well with uh, just brushing my teeth 15 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> you love to see it. Nice mint and uh, bitterness uh, clashing together. The number four seed this year joined Joseph at the bottom of last year's bullshit bracket. But don't count him out. He's a hacker, a guitar player, and he's here this year with something to prove. Ladies, he's single. It's Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see what you wrote for yourself. Except for everybody, I'm Gabe, and I'm drinking the standard High Life. Can't go wrong with it. Champagne beer, baby. Right in the middle, like I am in the seat. So. <laughs> in the number three spot, he's the ambassador of anime, a connoisseur of frozen pizza, and the host of this very podcast. But more than anything else, he's hungry for a win. It's the person who's talking right now, Jacob Thompson. <laughs> and he's single. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jacob, and tonight I still have these in my fridge. It's more Truly Teas. I'm doing the raspberry variety. I want to keep a light because this is an early record for us. Um, but you know what? They're still tasty. So. The number two seed. She is loved around the world for her 3D prints and her outstanding showing in the bullshit bracket last year. But will she be able to return to the championship match? She's a cheesehead, a CEO, and the queen of comebacks, Emily Widenzee. Hey, yo. 
I'm drinking the cherry, black cherry, truly lemonade. Um, one of my favorites. Okay, okay. And finally, the number one seed. He stunned last year with his flowing rhymes. But will we see a repeat performance? He's a technical wizard, the ultralight backpacker, and your reigning champion, Dayton Pax. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, so I, I'm Dayton, and you know what? I'm not saying that I picked my beer specifically for this for this episode or anything, but I picked Juice Lord, brought to you by Lord Hobo, and you know, I'm not saying that I'm going to put anybody you know out on the streets, but Tim, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, don't get ahead of yourself, Dayton, before I have to do my classic rigmarole. Uh, welcome back to the podcast, everyone. As always, you can find our show on Mondays on YouTube and podcast services. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at EWF Podcast and go follow us on Twitch at EWF underscore podcast. We're live right now recording this bullshit bracket. You can hop in the chat, make some funny comments. There also is going to be a fan favorite poll uh, going out on in the Twitch chat and also on Instagram this week. So watch our Instagram stories for a, a poll on who is your favorite contestant from this week. But enough about that. Let's get into it, everyone. It's the Bullshit Bracket. It's season two. We learned a lot last year, and this year, it's a fucking show. All right? The production value is through the roof thanks to Dayton's hard work. I implore you, if you are an audio listener, just take a chance and go over to YouTube for a little bit and see the, the work Dayton's put in for the visual spectacle. It's really fantastic. So uh, make sure you do that. But here's how it's going to rock and roll. All right? Four matches tonight, you know, as there are eight of us. Each person will give their opening arguments, then they can talk shit about each other in a rebuttal period, and then we have a question and answer from the audience. Afterwards, everyone will give a 1 through 10 score uh, for each of the contestants, and the person with the higher average score wins and moves on in the bracket. The losers get chucked into a consolation pool, and they'll still be able to participate in the coming weeks. Um, and also this year, the top three uh, contenders at the end of it will get fabulous prizes. So that's, that's fun. We're actually putting more money into this. So there is incentive to try hard. Um, but this first round, it's pasta pandemonium. All right. We are you discussing bet. what is the best pasta shape. And the bullshit bracket, I guess I should probably say what it is. If you've never heard the bullshit bracket, it's your first time listening to it. What it is, is a tournament on who's the best bullshitter, who's the best at debating topics that don't matter at all. <laughs> and it's always, you know, what's the best in this specific category? And in this first round, it's pasta shapes. All right. So the mat, the matchups in eight. First one, we got Dayton versus Tim. Next is Gabe versus Joseph. Then we got myself versus Cece and Emily versus Perk. And you know what? Let's get into it. Give me Dayton. Give me Tim. Let's go. We got Farfell versus Cavatappi. Dayton, you're uh, the opening argument here. All right. Well, here we go. <sighs> Let me just, you know, stretch out, stretch, stretch, out, out. stretch out a little bit. Got to <laughs> My heart is racing for you. Like I'm <laughs> It's been it's been a uh, a long while since I since I've had to do this, so I guess I'll probably start out a little bit slower than than last year. Let me just interrupt really quick with a quick picture. Uh, here's a picture of Farfalle. If you guys don't know what it is, I don't know if you've been living under a rock or something like that. But it is also known as the butterfly pasta or the bow tie pasta. Uh, and it's great for kids because it's a fun pasta, which is great. Also, because Tim's arguments will probably end up appealing to children. Uh, <laughs> it, it pairs very well with both thick sauces and light oils alike. You know, you can put a nice little pesto on there, or you can also put on a creamy Alfredo. And no, there ain't no tomato, tomato about this. Because, Tim, I know why you chose Cavatappi. It's because you ain't getting that sloppy toppy. <laughs> In addition, farfalle is incredibly easy to manufacture. Uh, all it takes is a few swift movements of a machine. And... You know, it's also used in pasta salads as well as in hot dishes. And what I'm getting at here is that it's incredibly versatile, but it's not to be confused with cavatappi that gets served in a pile. 
<laughs> and you know, in addition to only being served in, in one color, you can also find it being served as a, as a, a, a Italy flag, the Italian flag, as an homage to its home nation, which is incredibly fascinating. And Tim, you know, all I'm going to say right now, cavatappi, it's just gentrified mac and cheese. All, all that all that you do is you get somebody who goes and oh let me put four different types of cheeses that nobody likes on this thing oh let me put some bacon in this oh let me put some parsley on top oh let me put some breadcrumbs on top okay when did Kraft Mac and Cheese stop being good enough for the people okay as far as I know Kraft Mac and Cheese still reigns and speaking of macaroni, Cavatappi is only a mistake in production. And I'm not talking a happy mistake like Bob Ross, because Cavatappi is only good doused in sauce. <laughs> Alright, so you know, I was just talking about how Cavatappi is actually, is actually produced. And you know how they actually make it? They squeeze it, squeeze it out of a diet like a machine taking a shit soft serve on a banana split. Farfalle is a delicate process of stamping the rectangular pasta and gently pinching it into a beautiful butterfly. And no, this ain't gonna be like junior high. Walking around with this hard on, this is gonna be the same as last year's round with Sean. Cause you're going down like Cavatappi spiral, COVID versus vaccine, antiviral. Tim versus Dayton, come on. Let's hear your debate, unless it's withdrawn. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Dayton, you said you were going to take it easy on the rhymes this year, but that was, that was too much. I'm sorry. Fun. I'm sorry, man. I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I, you know me. You know me. <laughs> so, so what I don't have is rhymes, but what I do have is cold, hard facts. And... Uh, <laughs> All right, Tim. Can I can I show can I show Cavatappi real quick for the people that don't yeah, know what yeah. it is? Okay. All right, there it is. Just threw it up on stream. All right. There's a picture of the best pasta shape. All right. Uh, as you can see, or if you're listening, maybe you can't, but it's a long, hollow, rigid corkscrew, or ridged corkscrew. Uh, it's like a perfect combo between rotini and elbow macaroni. You got the tube. You got ridges, you got a corkscrew shape, and that makes for some top tier sauce adhesion. Uh, it's gonna work great for any sauce. Mac and cheese is a classic, classic uh, choice, as Dayton pointed out. But this could also be great with a tomato, an Alfredo. You could even do like a carbonara, cacio e pepe. Top top is gonna do great. Um, it is a relatively new shape in pasta terms. Uh, it was invented in the 70s. And as Aiden mentioned, it was a mistake. But so was penicillin and the microwave. And I think this pasta shape is as great of an invention as either one of those. <laughs> uh, it is squeezed out of a dye, which makes it much easier to produce than uh, farfalle. Uh, you're just you're just extruding it. There's no folds. There's no moving parts there. Um, and it was originally invented by the Barilla Company. Uh, they named it after famous Italian musician uh, and actor Adriano Celentano. They gave it the name Celentani. But other manufacturers realized how much this pasta shape slapped. So they gave it the trademark name Cavatappi, which means corkscrew. <laughs> uh, and when you're chewing on it, it is pleasing and springy in the mouth. Uh, not too much chew, but but some. And the curves grip your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> yeah, you're a little hot bothered. <laughs> And finally, uh, I have some sources. Uh, I have some credentials for Cavatappi. It was named the best dried pasta shape of the 2020 Serious Eats 
Starch Madness Tournament. Starch Madness. <laughs> I love that. Uh, this was an internet poll, so it's below and real public. Uh, and this year's competition for Starch Madness is just determining the best pasta sauce, so it remains the undefeated champion. Uh, and that's about all I got. All right. And now we have the rebuttal period. Tim, I'll, I'll give it to you first. Do you have any any shots you want to take at Dayton? Um, or his pasta. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, mean, I guess, <laughs> I guess <laughs> or his pasta. <laughs> I got to look. I think Farfalle kind of fucking sucks as a pasta. Um, <laughs> it's all it's all looks, no function, just like an actual bow tie. Uh, you got poor sauce adhesion. All you got some folds. And really, the sauce is just going to slide right off of that shit. Um, and it cooks unevenly. The inside of farfalle is thicker because of the folds. And so it remains fucking uncooked. While well, the outside is all slimy and overcooked. And it's annoying to pick up with a fork. Because it's pretty flat. Whereas we got the tubular shape with Calvatapi. It's right on there. Like a lot of good points, Dayton. Okay, okay. Tim, yeah. how are you going to do farfalle that dirty when all you can do is chirp like a little birdie, okay? It just sounds like you just got a grudge. Even though cavatappi is best served with sludge. Okay, do you, do you ever serve cavatappi with just a light oil? I don't think so. You could. I don't think so. It seems like that would just slide right off your fork because of that spiral shape. And, Tim, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I'm kind of impressed that you chose a shape that is a downward spiral, considering that your trajectory in this bracket. You know, some might even call it prophetic, but me, I call it pathetic. All right? And Cavatappi is no more than a mistake which isn't any better than oil from a snake, all right? And, you know, some, some might tell me, oh, Dayton, you know, you're using ad hominem. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm trying to cause some mayhem. This is the bullshit bracket, and you better take off that jacket because I'm bringing the heat when I'm looking for a repeat, all right? Cavatappi is no more than a one-trick pony, just like Joseph's bum knee. Only good for one thing. <laughs> Zing! All right, you know, you probably you probably think that you caught me with my pants down, okay? But you're the one who whose argument sounds like it came from a clown. And the last thing that I'm gonna I'm gonna say here is it's a rhetorical question for the for the crowd. Would you rather have a pasta that is incredibly versatile and great for the kids, the youth of the nation? Or a pasta that is only used by white middle class women when they want to get a little fancy with their cooking. Alright, Tim, even though Cavatappi is shaped like a helix, you won't be rising like a phoenix, not even in the consolation matches when you're still a pile of ashes. Alright, I'm gonna open the floor for questions, and if I, if I may start. Dayton, I, I worry that you're all spectacle and no substance here. It's the bullshit bracket, baby. Sound, you're saying things that sound good, but I'm not sure your argument even exists. Um, okay. How do you respond to Tim's accusations of poor sausage agent and the difficult ability to pick up farfalle with a fork? So I think the fact that it cooks unevenly is a win in terms of uh, picking it up with a fork. You know, you can cook it so then the, the edges are done. The inside's a little bit still hard. That improves the friction forces on the fork tines, which improves the fact that it can actually be picked up. Additionally, I think the little nooks and crannies that are formed in the folding process are very good in terms of uh, sauce adhesion, especially for thick sauces. You get the best of both worlds. You get nooks and crannies. You get large flat portions for the oils. Boom. Incredibly versatile. All right. Uh, anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I've got one. Um, so, Dave, uh, yeah. at one point you said, last I checked, Kraft mac and cheese is king, but uh, your pasta is not actually macaroni. Um, so, 
Why, why did you just uh, say that your your shit's worse than? So Short maybe maybe, maybe I didn't I didn't make that clear enough. So the the mistake in production for cavatappi is because they were trying to make macaroni, and their their extrusion dies basically got fucked up, and and they they made cavatappi. So macaroni was what they were intending, which is the king, and instead they ended up with cavatappi, the vastly inferior uh, pasta shape to macaroni. Any other any other comments or questions? I don't know. Tim Tim made he, he might have bought me off. He made me mac and cheese the other day with cavatappi. <laughs> of course he made mac and cheese. Did, did he sprinkle four different types of fucking cheeses on it? It's just gentrified mac and cheese. It's like when white people go into a freaking slum and put all their money into it. It's no fucking different. Okay, okay. But a box of Barilla, no matter what shape, costs a dollar. How is it gentrified if it costs the same as your pasta? Well, that's the thing with gentrification. It really doesn't cost so much more, except they're saying that it's so much better, which then they drive the prices up on it. The question is, what's, what's in the box? You know, how, how many more pastas per that dollar am I getting? I mean, 16-ounce box, regardless. Sold by weight. I guess you're right. I was thinking like... <laughs> I'm going to start counting. <laughs> I'm going to ask that question later. You better start going through that box there, Perk. Will do. All right, I it's time yeah. for people to put okay. in their scores. Um, so everyone go to your to the spreadsheet and type in... Oh, this is hard. Uh, it, so is it like... Person. Is it a... Like a collective 10 between the two? Or are they individual No, scores? individual. Individual 1 okay, to 10 okay. for Dayton and then 1 to 10 for 10. Oh, yeah. me and Joseph Larry, this fucking copier. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that the whole time. I had, okay, let's do that. Numbers are coming in now. We're getting the votes. Oh, uh, rip date. Whoa, it looks like we got a weird floating thing here going on. We got a we got a floating point number on the field. Uh, yeah, rough. <laughs> we get a plug in play. It's I think it's rig. We are. We are. All right. So it looks like your final. I ended up with a 6.2. What? Right on your, your... Oh, there we go. There it goes. And Tim with a 7.7. Fantastic performance, Tim. I applaud you. Tim with the win. And before we move on, I would just like to get some opinions from the audience here. Emily, why did you go Tim over uh, date on this one? I, I know we talked about it a little bit coming in. Like, I feel like I had some bias. I tried to keep an open mind. Um... But there was a lot of reasons. I actually, I actually made some notes. Mm. Tim, about any sauce, you know, I love mac and cheese. Um, and I like the good mistakes analogy. We talked a lot about microwaves last year. That was a really good thing to bring up. And then the publicity winner. Um, I got to go with the public on that one. Thanks for, for showing the survey. What about you, CC? Where, where was your head at on this one? I think that Dayton tried to distract us with all his rhymes. And there was no content behind his words. Not the first um, time. <laughs> Sounds like you're just salty, oh, Emily. Y'all. You didn't keep that bias in check. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dayton. Thank you, Tim. Uh, we'll be seeing you next week for the next round. But before that, we have match number two on our hands. We got Gabe and we got Joseph. Spaghetti versus Kunk. God damn, I hate fucking pronounce it, Joseph. Conchiglione. <laughs> fucking shells, okay? It's shells it's and spaghetti. Conchiglia. Is right. it? I thought it was conchile. It's oh, conchiglia. Conchiglia. Yeah, conchiglia. Google has its, the, uh, what's the word? Yeah. The Y-A-Y. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. conchiglia. Yeah. You could have okay. said last year's losers, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, you don't need to use fighting words here, Emily. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. last year's losers, Emily. Emily. <laughs> In any case, Gabe, you have the opening argument. Oh shit, do I? All right, let me do the same stretch. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna add it. I'm gonna since I'm in the chat, you guys. This is my work cited. Uh, it's an MLA, of course. I just want MLA to is is the inferior citation oh, system. Right. I uh, just went to easy. Work cited. <laughs> to let you guys know, I did my research this time. I just do five minutes of research. Uh, before the podcast last year, and then get myself green by. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> so, as no you said, I did zero. I, I, <laughs> I took bullshit bracket a little too literally, and I was like, <laughs> talk my way through it. This time, I'm a little bit more prepared. So, as you guys know, I'm doing spaghetti. Uh, and spaghetti, I want to do a quick analogy to open up my argument. Spaghetti is like that one friend that no one has any qualms with. Uh, he's just there, and everyone just knows he's got your back, and he's always there to listen to you. He's always like a sturdy rock of a friend, or she. Just a great companion. Uh, so let's go into the origin of spaghetti. Uh, spaghetti is an ancient pasta, unlike conchi, whatever the fuck, how you pronounce that, shell. <laughs> I'm just going to call it shells for now. Mm-hmm. Um, most people think of spaghetti as an Italian creation, but its origin is actually contested. Uh, it either came from Arab traders to Italy or um, China, and some even believe that the great Marco Polo brought it with him uh, when he was doing his travels, and that's where it came from. But because it's so old, it's kind of hard to find uh, a lot of written stuff about it because it's that fucking old. It's that much of a mainstay. Uh, The first written record of spaghetti was in the mid-12th century. From there, it has gained its popularity and survived to become staples and diets across multiple cultures and through centuries, including the United States, where it reigns as a very popular pasta. Continuing on. Spaghetti is a household name that everyone can pronounce, and it even has its own day. <laughs> national Spaghetti Day, January 4th. Last I checked, there is no National Shell Day. Or, uh, can he get... I'm, 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 there's no shell day. I'm, I'm so bad at pronouncing, and we picked a fucking <laughs> whole topic on shit. <laughs> Just showing how white we are. Yeah, it, you can tell I grew up in a small town. Uh, spaghetti is so popular that it's also made its way into memes. Everyone knows the most famous one. I'm play a little audio clip for you. Oh, oh, touch my spaghetti. <laughs> Everyone knows that. 2017, it was everywhere. Uh, there's even a Know Your Meme page. Check that. We're excited uh, that I've tagged. Uh, it's, right there. it's a great read. We also got the Adult Swim program, Tim and Eric's show. It's Spaghetti Prank. Very popular. And of course, our own Dayton Packs went by the Steam moniker Spaghetti Prophet for years. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Next, a scat, you know? <laughs> uh, finally, uh, for Pro Spaghetti, uh, Spaghetti doesn't need to do anything crazy. I know, uh, I've, I've seen this argument coming that it's just boring, right? But it doesn't need to do any crazy shapes for it to be effective and loved. Everyone fucking loves spaghetti. Uh, it's one of the most popular pastas in the world. And it's function over fashion in the best way possible. And it has a great sauce to noodle ratio. And Tim actually mentioned it previously, that starch madness. Uh, Kavatapi did go first, so props to Tim. Uh, but second place was spaghetti. And oddly enough, Shells wasn't on that list. Even weirder, there was two other websites I looked for top pasta shapes. And Shells just was absent, but Spaghetti was always on those lists. And that would be, let's see, what websites do we have here? Medium.com's article and init.com's article. Again, check the works cited if you don't believe me. <laughs> oh, <this is> <laughs> <laughs> um, where I'll, I'll save my next my next section for the, the rebuttal, for the, okay. the argument against. But. Joseph, you have the floor. All right. Um, so... As Gabe could not pronounce it because, as he would say, it's an Italian word because um, he's from the white Midwest town of Owasso. You but pronounced it's an, that way yesterday too. It's Italian um, because like you said Italian last time. yeah to make fun of you. Mm, you're two beers. Let's let's keep it let's keep it it's, in today's uh, debate. It's here. Definitely Italian. Um, so Italian or conchiglie, which mean comes from the Greek word conch, which basically just means shell, um, similar to how in English, uh, same, same root word. Um, because of the, uh, the shape of the shell or the, the pasta, it is not actually not common for it to be a fresh pasta just because of the, uh, the complexity of it. It's only, mostly only found as a dry pasta, um, which means it's mostly eaten in southern Italy, 
um, where dry pastas are more popular, as well as the UK. Um, those are some of the top consumers of conchiglie. Um, so I have a question for the judges here, because Gabe was too ignorant to know the name of my pasta, so he called it shells. There are actually three types of shells. Um, and so conchiglie is the medium shell, which is what my initial argument was for. But because my opponent referred to them as just general shells, am I allowed to include arguments for jumbo and mini shells as well? I agree. I, yeah, yeah, approve. I just, I just have a question yeah. from, like, from ignorance here. Are these mini shells the same as CC's pasta? No. No. Okay. Then you may no. proceed. That is a different pasta shape. Okay. Okay. So, conchiglie is the middle brother of the three. Um, it is actually the most versatile of the three as well. Um, it is commonly used with just a plain or just a standard sauce. Um, it's got those nice outer ridges for clinging, as well as that inner pocket that the shell folds into um, to hold a nice, nice little pocket of sauce. Very common for um, a melted cheese, like a very well-known Velveeta and shells. Um, and then you get a nice little little punch of, punch of cheese sauce at the end. Um, they're also great for, uh, specifically conchiglie, is great for, you can stuff them with like a ricotta and spinach or like meat and cheese, that kind of stuff. And you can bake it. Uh, none of the previous pastas have mentioned their baking capability. Um, I, I don't know that I'd want baked spaghetti, but that's up to the consumer, I suppose. <laughs> um, again, with the so then the smaller pasta, which I should have written that down, it's conchiglietti, I believe, um, which is just smaller shell. Um, those are more commonly used in soups, um, just because they're smaller, bite-sized nuggets of pasta, and then you can have it in your soup and. Conchiglione, I believe, don't quote me on that though, um, is the jumbo shells, and those are what's more known for um, stuff, um, for it being, you know, stuffed with, you know, meats and stuff. But, but conchiglie is able to be and commonly used for a more bite sized stuffed shell. Um, and I did look through, and actually I found a recipe I'm gonna try, I haven't done it yet, but for vegan stuffed shells. They use um, cashews and something to make a ricotta-like um, material. Not material, but like, I can't think of the word. Man, you're really, you're really trying to appeal to the materials engineers here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, know, I know my audience. Um, but there's vegan options for it as well. Because um, usually, you know, most Italian dishes involve cheese and butter and, you know, that. So it, it can be... A, a classic Italian dish can be hard to be made vegan. Um, so I'm actually, I saved that recipe and I'm going to try it out. And maybe, you know, later on, I'll let you guys know how that goes. I'm actually pretty excited for it. Um, and that is uh, mainly all that I've got for, you know, it's got a nice variety of uh, sauce capabilities. So, Joseph, you can start with your rebuttal and then we'll go to Gabe afterwards. Okay. I, damn it, I should have mentioned it before, but I would like. <laughs> The judges to open their Twitch uh, during my um, during my rebuttal, I suppose, even though I'm still continuing. Um, so I, I can you know keep talking while this, but I would, I'd like to have it open, please. Um, so spaghetti, as we know, doesn't have ridges. Um, so Gabe mentioned it's got a nice sauce to noodle ratio. If the ratio you like is all noodle to a little hint of sauce. It's the LaCroix <laughs> of sauce, if you will. Um, it's also just a fucking basic ass noodle. Like, not creative. It, it's just also an extruded noodle, but anyone can fucking do it. You can make it at home with just a knife if you wanted to. Like, very just standard, run-of-the-mill. Great for the time, don't get me wrong. As, as pasta is, you know, being created, I totally understand how that one was created first. Makes sense. Um, but it's also just become the fucking old news, like, who, who cares? The, it, Gabe mentioned that it's the friend that's always there. I think of it as the friend that you made in middle school that you don't really talk to anymore, and he just kind of sticks around. And he's like, yeah, I ate spaghetti when I was a kid, but when the fuck was... I, don't, I could not tell you the last time I ate spaghetti. 
I don't care to eat spaghetti. You know, I, I'd i rather have shells. A little, little bit more spice, a little more variety. Um, also, spaghetti can be a slur for Italians. If you know the classic film, or not series, but film spaghetti westerns, um, which people just said because these movies were cheaply produced in Italy and used Italian actors and then it was dubbed over. Um, so you got some racial problems with your pasta there, Gabe. <laughs> oh, um, just wait till the rebuttal, buddy. <laughs> and, and it's messy to eat. Um, you know, you don't want to be looking like Patty at Akano Foods. Check the Twitch stream. Um, oh, with your great. spaghetti <laughs> on the fucking floor all over the place. And like, what are, you, what are you supposed to do? Twirl it with a fork and a spoon? That's stupid as fuck. Right? Or twirl on a plate and slurping noodles all over the place. You're getting sauce flinging everywhere. That's a classic movie trope right there. Get that fucking shit out of here. And, um, and oh, hold on. Last, last point being, um, most people have a specific utensil to serve spaghetti. You have to buy, you don't have to, but it's very commonplace to buy spaghetti tongs or spaghetti scoop. I don't want to deal with that shit. I'm not, for this one thing, what else are you going to use a spaghetti scoop for? Like, I have this extra utensil to make it slightly more convenient to use this garbage-ass noodle. So, Gabe. What's up, Justin? Uh, <laughs> Good buddy. I'm going to go with a few things. First off, I think it's a compliment that it's a special tool for spaghetti. Uh, secondly, I hear this whole thing about the sizes. Um, spaghetti has multiple sizes as well. Everyone knows there's linguine and angel hair, so you can just kind of pick your poison. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm, Those bro, are different. Those are different pastas. You can't be just saying they're different. They're different to find Okay, spaghetti. well, spaghetti Those walks so they could run, okay? Can I, can I give a flight <laughs> Okay, no, it's my rebuttal. Okay. It's my rebuttal. Okay. Okay. Uh, what else was I going to say? Uh, there's a lot of arguments about my pronunciation. I feel like that's more attacking the person and not the pasta. Pasta, the spaghetti is a classic. Everyone knows it. Uh, shells is just not as common. You know, I mean, pasta has been a it, well, pasta. Spaghetti has been around that long for a reason. It's because it's popular and because it's like it wouldn't be manufactured to the level that it is now because because it's being consumed so much. And then we went back to another argument about um, the slur that spaghetti can be. And Shells has had some, some controversy, too. Uh, one company uh, made their new line of pasta, and they made their version of Shells. And they named it after a, a country that they, the Italians occupied in 1930 during Mussolini. And then they had to roll it back because they're like, oh, Maybe we shouldn't name it after a country we took over brutally. But when you did that, the name went from this country in Ethiopia back to Conquile. And with it, the bloodied memories of brutal fashion by his <laughs> occupation. <laughs> it is a savage, savage occupation. And now its memories have changed with that name. Spaghetti is a mainstay. And we're going to go back to my opening statement. Joseph had a rebuttal on it. Spaghetti is that friend no one has qualms with. It's been around. It's a mainstay. Everyone loves it. Solid pasta. While Kinkile is the guy who tries to emulate the newest trend to fit in, but in reality, no one even knows his name or how to pronounce it, so they give it a nickname. I have qualms with spaghetti, as I mentioned previously. <laughs> I'm going to open up the floor for questions, um, and again, I can start. I just want to get a side by side comparison here. This is both the game and Joseph. Which, what types of sauce are typically served with your pasta? Good question. How versatile is the sauce selection? Well, for spaghetti, obviously, you think of your classic tomato sauces, right? You can also use it for summer salads, too. Oh, you see spaghetti um, salads as well. So, understandably, uh, spaghetti, when you think of it, you're going to think of those tomato sauces. Um, and that's okay because it. Pairs well with it for a reason because it, it's great with tomatoes. Um, so shells, uh, as I mentioned, um, you can bake it traditionally in a, with a red sauce. Um, you also is very common with the cheese sauce. Again, mentioned shells and cheese, Velveeta, shout out. 
got we used to call it grandma cheese because my grandma always made Velveeta for us. Classic memories of that. Um, and then yeah, soups. I, I don't know how common like an Alfredo is. I'm sure it can be done very easily. Um, and I believe uh, the smaller shells con yet are used also in um, like a more of a, a pasta salad is pretty common. Actually, I don't know if it's conchiglie or so you you do get the the vinegars and the the oil style sauces as well with them. So a lot more sauce variety than red sauce and some butter sometimes. Uh, before we go on to the next question, I did kind of forget. Uh, spaghetti can also totally be used with you know Alfredo and pesto, and you definitely can bake spaghetti as well too if you wanted to. Well, yeah, you can bake it, but do people? Yeah. Uh, if any any other questions? Yeah, I got one to throw to Joseph. Um, you mentioned that spaghetti, and it was a negative to you, could be used with a knife, or made with a knife. Mm -hmm. But then you also mentioned, like, it needs a specific utensil to scoop out. Like, if you were to make shells at home, because a lot of people like making pasta at home, you would mm -hmm. need an extremely specific utensil. Yeah. Right? Like, so what's your argument there? Yeah, to make it, you need a generic utensil, spaghetti. But to scoop it, you know what I'm saying? Like, to scoop shelves yeah specific utensil, but to make it it's also a pretty but, but more people are gonna eat it than are gonna make it i'm yeah it's fun i've made you know ravioli and i don't i didn't have a fucking press for it and it was a pain in the ass but it still turned out fine you could you could make it i mean it's curled you what you could make shells is what you're saying without yeah, you utensil. yeah you could use like a fork to get the ridges that's pretty common uh similar to like a gnocchi or a soon to come up um, pasta. Shout out to Cece. Um, I think, isn't Orchetti doesn't have the ridges on the back, if I remember correctly? Um, uh, point... Sort of. Okay. Point being, it can be used without the mold. It's just if you want to make it as pretty, and yeah, if you want to make spaghetti with a knife, it's not going to be nearly as pretty as what you get out of the box either. Um, unless you have a pasta maker to extrude it. So Probably tastes the same. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Good ridges. I have a game. What's up, Sam? Uh, so I feel like your entire argument was based around spaghetti's popularity. Uh, yeah. Yet, very much of your life choices are not based around something's popularity, such as your music taste. Uh, what else does spaghetti really have going for it other than <laughs> popularity? <laughs> that was a really. That wasn't even a question. That was a deep cut at my first. <laughs> but okay. Uh, obviously, pasta, or spaghetti is extremely popular pasta, uh, but at the same time, it is one of those things that it's popular because it's good, right? Like, it tastes fantastic. I always love looking forward to going home and getting that homemade spaghetti from, from all my family members. It's, uh, it's a good quality meal uh, that you can't go wrong. What's that look for, Dave? You didn't have good spaghetti at home? I'm I'm just questioning why the fuck you look forward to spaghetti of all things. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, what are you talking about? Everyone Dude, loves spaghetti. This is coming from Dayton, the son of Jan Pax, who makes a damn good stuffed shell. Okay, <laughs> we had them on spring break, and there were some fucking good stuffed shells. I think if yeah. something has survived thousands of years like that, it's got to be thousands of years. Okay, but I don't think it's that old. Hundreds. Sorry, my bad. Perkins, yeah. Thousands of years. Yeah, oh, Lord a... Jesus Christ, we have spaghetti. <laughs> I have a question for Gabe. What's up? Uh, National Shell Day is June 21st. Oh, shit. Uh, that no. was not my work cited. Uh, <laughs> Perk, I do have to ask. <laughs> also not a question. For seashells or for pasta shells? That was all uh, No comment. Hold on. He, he didn't say... He can said we, literally we, just shells. He said not co co whatever. Okay, Kinkile, the pasta. Yeah, he there said. Is not an he asshole. said there's not a coke. Co whatever. There's just not a shells. <laughs> check, check the tapes. There's, there's shells. Uh, uh, ruling stands. I'm. Uh, I'm <laughs> I don't think that's the shells they're thinking of. I think they're thinking of not pasta. I think. And this is another question. I think it's time to vote. Um, everyone, put in your your scores in the spreadsheet. Seen a, sorry, I got I to gotta commentate for the <laughs> listening one. 
we're seeing a lot of close scores um, next to one another. We even see a tie from, from CC. CC, that uh, was my same thought. I had on the edge. Tough. Dane, can we get a floating point fix on this bad boy? Yeah. Coming right in. Pretty sure I know what the answer is, but I want to wait for this confirmation. All right. Um, Gabe with an average score of 6.2 and Joseph with an average score of 7. Joseph takes the cake and uh, again I'll get some comments from our audience never here. I've won a round before. This is I, I want to just start by saying Gabe, I don't think you lost because of your poor because of your argument. I think you lost because you made a poor ass choice. I agree. Just fucking sucks. <laughs> I think if you had picked a better pasta you could have easily won this. Uh, I was Linguini, shitting my for example. pants when you came out with sources and you were talking. I was like I'm fucked. There's no way. Like I'm completely <laughs> fucked. But then yeah, I realized man. my pasta is just better than They're like spaghetti. wait a second. It's spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't think this was a I don't think you showed your true potential here. I think you just picked a, raw, a bad pasta. We'll, we'll see in round two, I guess, right? We'll see. Um, Cece, why, were, why was it a tie on this one for you? Well, they both let me down. Um, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Gabe failed to mention Eminem's classic line, Mom's Spaghetti. That you was know, my I was looking yeah. for. Yeah, I, I forgot I about know. that. You're right. Well, I think that was a huge letdown. Um, and Joseph hated on LaCroix halfway through. I don't <laughs> hate on LaCroix. I drink LaCroix quite a bit. I'm sorry if that was a hate. But he he did um, really attack a personal. There was a lot of attack on personal. I have a box of LaCroix up there. This is the actual <laughs> pasta. Um, well, and spaghetti really only goes with, with red sauce. You can say it goes with white sauce, but when was the last time you saw someone use like a creamy sauce on purpose with spaghetti, you know? I feel like it's the obvious choice for carbonara, though. But, mm-hmm. but like, that's, I don't know, that's not Gabe the didn't mention that, that, though, Gabe, you know? Yeah. yeah he Gabe, made. Gabe yeah. also didn't mention spaghetti tacos for my Carly, which was another glaring <laughs> omission. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dayton, you gave Joseph a 9 and gave a 7. Uh, what was your argument there? Uh... You know, I, I think that really what resonated with me was the fact that Joseph hit on the fact that my number one complaint was spaghetti. And that's the fact that when you're eating it, he is like sp- spaghetti is incredibly slurpy. And with somebody who's like, like the, the fucking like sounds of like when people are eating, like really grosses me out. That is a nasty ass sound. And in addition, it gets sauce everywhere. Like, if you're wearing anything that is other than, like, a red shirt, like what I'm wearing right now, you're going to look like you just came out of a fucking war zone eating that spaghetti. <laughs> and I think that is a highly, 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 highly underrated aspect of eating spaghetti, and I'm glad that Joseph brought it up, so thank you. I, got I was a disappointed. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, no choking hazard. I mean, that was a big one for me, and nobody brought it up. Spaghetti, huge choking hazard. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Wait, hang on a second. Why did nobody bring up the fact that you could put like spaghetti like through your nose and then like back through your mouth? <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. Eat sure not a bug. <laughs> <laughs> One point I forgot to bring up, but I I wasn't too like sure on how to word it so that it was a diss on spaghetti. Was everyone cooks spaghetti incredibly wastefully? And Tim and I watched a, a cooking video on it. Uh, on what was his name? Ken. Something Kenji? Kenji? Oh, that's the cookbook I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cookbook. Yeah, that cookbook. He actually boiled spaghetti in like a big saucepan or pan rather than like a stock pot. He's like, people use way too much fucking water when they boil spaghetti because it's so fucking wasteful to like fill it up, you know? And so yeah, he, ever, he did it like Doesn't he do it where he boils it and then he just takes off the heat and puts the lid on it and it just cooks? Or I can't I, remember if that was... He might have done that for... That might be for like fresh pasta. This was dried oh, okay. pasta. Yeah. But yeah, I, that was a... Interesting point, and it, it is, yeah, so. Man, it's also, yeah, also going to be wasteful to, to last. Fergus, why did you go with Joseph over Gabe? It was almost a dead heat for me. Uh, Joseph gave a shout-out to Velveeta Shells and Cheese, um, <laughs> which that that kind of rung the bell for me. Uh, question two, is Velveeta vegan? No. Because it's definitely not cheese. <laughs> it's got cheese product in it, though. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're going to go into our third match before we do I have a breaking news announcement um, during the last match I got a phone call from uh, my friend Chris who is also Perkins I went to high school with as a friend and some of you guys know I've talked about 
Um, I obviously couldn't take the call, so I told him, you know, I'm busy right now. I'm live on Twitch. How much? You know, shut up. Mm-hmm. And he said, I'm engaged. Let's give a fucking round of applause for Chris getting engaged to Kenna. Um, shout out to my dude. Very, very happy for you. Um, yeah. That was, I, it threw me off guard in the middle of this. I was trying to stay focused. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> best friends got engaged. So, shout out to you, Chris. That's fucking amazing. All right. Now and it's now you got to go into it. Now I got to go into my argument. So, we're into the third match. Myself versus CC, and I swear to God, see, I pulled up this video on how to pronounce uh, your pasta <laughs> or kete. I've listened to it about fifteen times. I still can't get it down, um, but that's fine. I'm talking about lasagna as my initial argument. Ooh. So, I'd like I'd like to stretch it out a little bit. I would like to start with a quote from the great Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, oh damn! If a man is called to be a street sweeper. He should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted, or Beethoven composed music, or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, lasagna only has one job. Let's be honest. You you have lasagna noodles and you make lasagna. But it does that job perfectly well, okay? Is it versatile? No. Do you use any (laughs) other sauces in it besides red sauce? No. But guess what? Lasagna is fucking perfect. Okay? It does one job, and it does it perfectly well. Okay? And if you don't know, lasagna, a very simple pasta. It's just a sheet. (laughs) Some flat sheet of pasta. Sometimes you get the wavy edges, you know, if you're being fancy. But it's just a flat piece of pasta. Um, Its name is derived from cooking pot or possibly flatbread. I think the cooking pot is having to do with how it's it's an oven-baked thing. It's kind of It's all cooked, like, in a pot kind of scenario, you know? And, uh, you know, like I said, you're only making one dish. You're making lasagna. When I say lasagna, we're talking noodles, we're talking sauce, and we're often talking meat and cheese, all right? Maybe veggies if you're feeling fancy with it, you know? Uh, But the nice thing about lasagna is it's so simple that you can vary vary up how you want to. You can make it vegetarian super easily. You can make it vegan uh, pretty easily as well, you know? And, uh, you know, it's it's not not hard to cook. You fucking put it in a pan... And you put it in the oven, you know? Um, and some of you might be saying, oh, I don't want to boil these long-ass noodles. Then they throw them in. It's kind of hard to handle them. I'm like, whoa, whoa. Just get the oven-ready lasagna, okay? You don't even have to cook them beforehand. You just put them in the pan with the sauce. Well, it cooks in the oven. It soaks up the sauce and becomes uh, nice and, you know, normal pasta consistency, right? So just don't don't fuck with regular lasagna. Just get the oven-ready stuff, okay? It's good shit. And uh, there's there's zero guesswork, right? Whenever you're making actual pastas, I'm sorry, you have to boil it in the water. And everyone's like, oh, how do I get it al dente or whatever? How long, uh, how much salt do I put in? Get that shit out of here. Lasagna's put in the fucking oven. You don't have to worry about it. Zero guesswork on lasagna. And uh, it soaks in all that sweet, sweet flavor you want. And when we're eating pasta, what do we want, people? You want the sauce. You want the bean cheese. And lasagna is the perfect vehicle to get you to that sauce meat. And cheese, all right? And uh, we've talked about um, sauce adhesion and the ease of picking things up with a fork previously in these arguments. And lasagna, it's the easiest, it's the easiest thing. It's just, it's a stack. You scoop it up, you put it in your mouth. You don't have to worry about, you know, hand, like, you know, roping around some pasta with a fork, you know? Super easy. It's filling. It's tasty. You could make it the night before if you want to and throw it in the oven the next day. Or, you know, the best feeling is when a family member of your mom is like, hey, Honey, you're going off to college. I bet you this lasagna. I made you this lasagna. Just put it in the oven, and then you're eating good for a week. You know, it's just it's the epitome of a mother's love. Okay, so you can't be telling me that lasagna. Oh, it's too simple. It's you know, it's you only do one thing with it. That's the beauty of it. It's perfect at what it does. And I'll just say this last thing: Jim Davis could have picked any food to be Garfield's favorite, but he chose lasagna. <laughs> I yield the rest of my time. Mic drop. <laughs> I I appreciate your argument. I think you did well. Um, but I think I'm gonna go into orcate. You did. You tried your your hardest pronouncing it. I, I know did. you really didn't. You really had to work for it. Unlike lasagna, <laughs> <laughs> that is basic. But we'll go into it. Talk a little about the history. Um, so it was invented in the eighth eighth century in a small town in Italy. It got its name because it's shaped like an ear, which is kind of cool, you know? We have two of them, so it's twice as cool as lasagna. 
it's a little thinner <laughs> in the middle than it is on the on the edges, which, which gives a good texture, you know, a little variety for each chew. It's a little bit shallow, but has a little curve, so it, it holds sauces, you know, not flat, boring, plateaued. Um, Italians have been making this, this pasta for 700 years with almost no change to it, because why change perfect, right? Um, so the cook time, basic 9 to 12 minutes, costs about $3, a very affordable meal, something that that, you know, we need to look out for now in the pandemic days when money isn't flowing. Well, I mean, we have the stimulus checks now, but <laughs> money wasn't flowing for, <laughs> for a minute there. Um, and then let's talk about the nutrition. Do you have dietary needs? It's vegetarian, egg-free, peanut-free, vegan, soy-free. It hits all the marks, you know, except, you know, gluten, but fucks <laughs> fuck the people who don't eat. Gluten. So they're, not, they're not here for this podcast. <laughs> this is a pro gluten podcast. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> it's got 200 calories per serving. You know, if you're looking out for those, for those that health, it's very reasonable. You know, and I know that every little kid or I, as a little kid, like to chew on raw pasta. This is the pasta for you. You just have one or two little, little or, oricates and, you know, a little crunch and you're done. No need to pull out a whole lasagna cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the other functions of this pasta. So for all our single homies, you know, Gabe, Jacob, <laughs> Rip. It's getting brought up a lot for us. <laughs> <laughs> talking, about, talking about pasta, but okay, continue. Um, it, so this pasta um, takes about an hour and 20 minutes to cook, like, from scratch, plus about 20 to 40 minutes to eat, and then to really have a conversation with the person you're making this pasta with, this pasta is the perfect date pasta. Your plus one will be impressed with your creativity, for making this pasta from scratch and plus if the date's not going well you just boot them out of your house when you're done two <laughs> hours that's nothing that's easy money <laughs> why it rocks well you know it it can be served with chunky sauce and thin sauce but everyone knows that chunky sauce is the best well Zan is not served with chunky sauce like that you have no argument there it's it's good for like, it pairs well with vegetables. With in a world where beef is the leading cause for deforestation, we need to eat more vegetables. You know, is lasagna looking out for the planet? I don't think so. And it can easily be cooked in one pan, reducing the number of dishes you have to wash. You know, for your lazy people or the people that are looking out for water consumption. You know, we're looking out for Mother Earth on this podcast. And then easily served hot and cold, you know, warm, like warm summer's day. You go to a family function, you've got your oricate, you know, your, your, your perfect pasta dish or cold, cold, cold winter day. You come in a nice little soup with your, with your tomatoes and oricate, you know, it's perfect for every occasion. And that's, that's my argument. All right. Do you have any shots you want to take me before I take some shots of you? Yeah. I I think the only thing that I really have to say for lasagna is that it is good for one thing and one thing only. And for it's good to be made for for funerals. It's only <laughs> meant for <laughs> and nothing else. God damn. All right. Well, apparently I mean, the funeral it's for is yours, Jacob. <laughs> no. As, as CC mentioned, it is only good for one thing. But as I was a corner on my argument, that's what makes it so good. It perfects its one job. But I do want to poke some holes into CC's argument. She made a lot of points as if uh, Orchete had these, like, one-ups over lasagna. 95% of the said, things she said are also true for lasagna. She said uh, it's a cheap meal. Lasagna is also super cheap, and it gives you a shit ton of food. Uh, oh, beef's the leading cause of 
of uh, climate change. Yeah, I agree. You can make lasagna vegetarian or vegan super easily. Also, you can get gluten free uh, oven ready noodles. So I, I, you know, I help out the gluten free people where you're just shooting them down. Okay. You said you can cook it one pan. That's all lasagna is is one pan. You know, uh, water consumption. The oven ready. You don't even have to use water to cook the noodles. So I mean, I'm just. I feel like I'm beating you in all these arguments you brought up. Um, but, but but let me let me go back to my other shots at Archiette. All right. The reason I could barely pronounce this entire podcast because no one's fucking heard of it. Okay. No one buys Archiette at the store. Good luck even finding it at a grocery store because nobody carries it because it's so rare. Yeah, you can make it yourself, but who has time for that in this busy world we live in? Right. We're all work professionals. Look at Emily. She's got. Uh, she was in grad school, a job, and her own business going all at the same time. It's just time to fucking make little little pasta at night. No, okay, but she makes lasagna on the weekend. And she's eating for the entire week. I just heat that shit up, okay? So, you know, it and also, you, you mentioned they're made, they mess with little ears. And, oh, that's cool. No, that's creepy as fuck. Okay, I don't want to be <laughs> looking down at my me. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm eating children's ears right now. Like these cute <laughs> little ears. That's fucking disgusting. Maybe for like a Halloween thing, but during the week, I don't want to be chewing on little ears. Uh, fucking gross. And, yeah, they are little shells, and you say, oh, they, like, you know, can grab the pasta. No. Okay, I looked at pictures of Orchiette because they were eating it because, again, no one's heard of it. And it looks super fucking hard to be able to, like, oh, I got to, like, grab with a fork and then scoop the sauce. What the fuck are you talking about? They also look super dry all the time. Like, there's no sauce adhesion again because there's a little bit of texture, but it's mostly smooth, right? So you're not even getting a good, you know, uh, a sauce flavor in there. As opposed to Joseph shells where they are literally just packed with fucking sauce meat and cheese whatever you want right uh so yeah i mean no one's had this thing because no one's heard of it no one cares about it stores don't even stock it they're gross they're bad sauce adhesion i mean i could go on if you can go on then please go on jacob <laughs> <laughs> we got that i'll just say this i mean the, a lot of people will say lasagna is basic right only one thing but i think because one it only has one job it does it well but two, it is so simple that you can vary it how you want to. And Dayton, like I said, super easy to make a vegan. So I think we will now questions. open the floor to questions. I want to start. It's hard. It's hard being a contestant and a host. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. <laughs> Jacob, I feel like I got a little bit of flack for only having one sauce usage cases and it sounds like that's exactly what your argument is. This is the same as mine. So how do you respond? So when I asked uh, for the sauce comparison between uh, you and Joseph, I wanted to see where we're at, you know. Sure. Uh, but it turned out both of you mostly use red sauce, which didn't actually end up being a factor. I always wanted to see okay. between your two, you know, how do they compare on the sauce variety argument? But I don't, I don't disagree. Yeah, you only use one sauce with lasagna, but again, that's what I'm saying is it's greatest strength. You know exactly what you're getting when you get a lasagna. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Going off of that, I have a question for you, Jacob. Talk about vegetables in your lasagna how do you respond to eggplant lasagna which takes out the entire lasagna noodle right it's basically oh. every oh, shit talk about your argument do you think eggplant lasagna is coming after the pasta we'll see now let me let me ask you this as a response this this tournament is about the best pasta shape right so if you take out the lasagna noodle that's not really a part of this discussion anymore so I'm but really... I guess my my point is that's a replacement to your pasta. What? Oh, I see what you're saying. Know. Yeah, like that's that's attacking you. We don't even need your pasta. Is what I I'm mean, possibly. But here's what I'll say to that. I mean, it kind of was was what Gabe was trying to say earlier. I mean, lasagna built the framework, and now it's allowing variation. And I think it's good that if people, I mean, if you have certain dietary restrictions, uh, and you or you're trying to want to eat healthier, and you need to make replacements, that happens all the time with a bunch of kind of dishes, right? So I don't think that's necessarily a knock. On lasagna, it's also eggplant lasagna isn't the primary way to consume lasagna. It's not like the, but it's not more, it's not become more popular than regular lasagna. So I, I don't think it's coming for it. But even if it did, I'd be like, good for you. If people like that more, more power to them. Okay. So, so Jacob, you you mentioned how easy lasagna is to to make, mm -hmm. uh, and you you said you made a lasagna not that not that long that is, ago. That correct? is correct. It was fucking good. So, as, as speaking as, from experience. How would you rate one to ten the difficulty of taking that first goddamn piece of lasagna out of the pan? Because holy shit, it never comes out right. It's always falling apart, and you got to scoop it all back into the plate. And it's it's not a perfect slice of lasagna anymore. So I understand like, your frustration, Joseph, and I, I think I might have had 
not as hard of a time because of the type of pan I use. I use a Pyrex pan, which has kind of like mm. um, the slopes, <laughs> the, the curved, the curved corners. You know what I'm saying? So I yeah. was getting like that hard edge. Um, I agree. It can be kind of a hassle, but the kind of the beauty of lasagna is even if it gets totally like fucked up, you're still getting the same composition in every bite. You know what I mean? Like it's still mm-hmm. going to taste the same. It was perfectly stacked or not. And it's still relatively easy to eat to kind of just grab everything. It's more of a scoop motion than a stab. Right. Mm. Um, but I think it's pretty easy to scoop with a fork because there's not a lot of like small parts that really sliding around too much. Because I mean the the noodle is just infused with sauce already from the baking process. So um, I, I I just have frustration though that can be uh, very. It's hard. always that first piece. It's it, yeah. it it you never pull the first. You see in the Stouffer's commercials, but they're they're fucking liars. <laughs> it's never at first. You you know maybe after the third slice you're getting it like to come out you know standing up, but mm-hmm. like that first one it's a fucking mess. Yeah, it's it's not it's not a stacked lasagna anymore. It's a fucking pile of free slop. Yeah, <laughs> but it's slop that tastes pretty good. You know, Jacob, I got I got a question for you. <laughs> Poor Jacob. Somebody asked CC a question. <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, this happens every year. No, no, I, <laughs> no, dude. I I have I have a question I specifically. This is the second one. <laughs> God, I should have said it. Anyway, All right, Jacob. All right, so let's say that you got that you got that sweet hot lasagna. That your mommy made you, okay? You can't eat that in one sitting, okay? So you got to reheat it. No, of course. You go and you reheat it, and you heat it up in the microwave, all right? Mm-hmm. You heat it up so the outside is perfectly the right temperature. You get to the center of it, and it's fucking cold, okay? How do you how do you deal with that other than, you know, heating up the outside so it's literally hot-ass fucking lava that burns your tongue, hot pocket syndrome so i didn't really run into that issue too much maybe i'm just not that picky of an eater but yeah like when it was time to reheat you know i pulled out the entire i just kept it in the pan and i just like covered it up right so i pulled the pan Mm -hmm. you know take out what i need to take out which is way easier when it's colder joseph Mm -hmm. you know you know when it's cold you easy get those chunk put on a plate it's more quiet cover the plate up put it in the uh, microwave for like what two two and a half minutes i mean they're big they're big chunks right and then uh you know i agree it's gonna be hot on the outside on the in the inside but Sometimes the slop method works. You can kind of just mix it up if you have to, um, just to kind of get the temperature more more uh, consistent throughout. If you want to, but like I'm honestly not that picky. If my if my food's lukewarm, I'll still eat it. So and if they, I think that's if that's an issue for you, I'd recommend a toaster oven for the reheat. Um, you know, to be a different type of, of heat, and it'll it'll work a little bit better throughout. I would assume. Well, the only thing that will actually influence you know how fast it gets to the center is just the temperature gradient, Jacob. So you'd have to heat it at a lower temperature for a longer time to make it so well, it's, it's evenly what heated you could throughout. Do, what you could do, Dayton, is just is cut it up into smaller squares before you put you it. You could, there. except then once you mix it up, then how is it any different than, than linguine? <laughs> okay, I feel what? like this, this argument <laughs> has devolved into the dish of lasagna. Yeah, this is a podcast yeah. topic and not a <laughs> topic. Yeah. What up, Dayton? What I'm just trying to get across here. Is that with lasagna noodles, you make the you make the dish of lasagna. The camera's not focusing, um, and it's super easy. Heat it up and it tastes good. What more do you want from me? Okay, mm-hmm. what more do you want? A good I, dish. <laughs> it is a good dish. Ooh, a shot. And the thing is, like, because it's the same every time, you might not always, um, might not always be in the mood for it. But when you're in the mood for it, you're like, yeah, let's fucking get this fucking lasagna. You know. <laughs> Are you ever in the mood for a week straight? Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. No way, dude. Come on, we were all in college. You don't yeah, be cooking I every fucking it. night. It's I the wasn't excited game. for it seven days in a row, but I would eat it because I was broke as shit. Like, <laughs> uh, all right. I think <laughs> yeah, that, I think it's time for voting. I think we've Jesus Christ, asked, you've, you've grilled me enough. <laughs> Hot seat. You did good. You did good. <laughs> Waiting game right now. Waiting for I want to give you some fucking numbers. negative ass numbers, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Oh fuck, dude. No, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Hmm. Date, we are waiting on Dayton. He was talking shit, and now he has to decide. I know. Well, I know. And, and I'm not, I'm not looking at the other scores either. I am. He's, he's not letting other scores influence him. I am not letting other scores influence I like me. Golf uh, commentating. <laughs> the, 
and uh, yeah. he's going in yeah. for the putt. Right. Ab- absolutely right. beautiful score. I think. <laughs> beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. That, if that PhD doesn't work out, you know you have a career as uh, <laughs> as a yeah. golf commentator. commentator. Yeah, for sure. And we are waiting for the final floating point adjustment here. And we have the final score: Jacob with an average score of a seven point three, CC six point five. So Jacob takes the win. And I'm going to first ask Tim. Tim had a very large disparity, uh, giving Jacob a nine and CC a five. Dude, Tim's swinging the votes with his garbage. <laughs> <laughs> he has so much fun. Funny how range. I feel. You see, say how he feels. He's honest. That's all. I haven't given any like threes yet. Yeah. Sure. Oh. All right. Uh, yeah. So to explain my vote, I feel like Jacob picked kind of a weak pasta. Uh, like, it really only has one purpose. But I don't think he could have structured his argument any better. Like, I think it was perfect. Um, he acknowledged its weaknesses right from the beginning. Uh, played up its strengths. Uh, but I do feel like CC's argument was kind of weak. The thing about it being 200 calories per serving, I mean, all pasta is made out of semolina flour, so it's going to be the same. Unless you're gluten-free. Per serving, no matter what you... What shape you no matter what pick. shape it yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you, Tim. Uh, next, I want to go to Joseph, who is a tie. I think CC brought in a very interesting point that we had not heard previously, which is the the dry pasta crunch factor. That is not something I had ever considered. If I'm being honest, I thought it was a little weird. Um, but... I, I think she definitely deserved bonus points for that. I think I think that's a valid, a very valid thing, you know, especially, you know, she mentioned as a child, I ate weird shit as a kid. I used to eat frozen waffles still frozen, you know. Dude, I go waffles I, so fucking good. Yeah. I, Don't worry, Joseph. You're still I fucking totally weird. I totally understand chewing raw pasta. So, like, okay, if that's a factor for you and why you like it, I, I can see it. And then, again, with what Tim was saying for Jacob... He knew it had one thing, and one thing only, and and he came out the gates like storming with that. Hey, lasagna noodles? It makes lasagna. Who would have guessed? Here's why lasagna slaps. And I think that that you know I think that's a very valid point. If you're gonna pick a, a one a one trick pony, let everyone know it's a one trick pony, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, and really you know dive into it. I am. But I'm not going to a one-trick pon- pony, so only a seven for me. Fair enough. Dayton, I'll go to you, who gave uh, CC an eight and myself a seven. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I really resonated with CC's argument about the whole environmental aspect of it. You know, I think that if you look at the majority of pastas and the major- sorry, majority of lasagnas that are made, I would argue that the vast majority of them would include meat. And I think that, uh, you know... We need to start transitioning away from meat and towards sustainable options. So that is why CC got my uh, my win over you, Jacob. And additionally, I thought the reason I rated you highly, I would argue that a seven is, is a high a high score, even uh, to give to the the uh, you know the person who ended up losing the round uh, or my my round, right? Uh, you you handled the the flack that we gave you incredibly well. You know, we peppered you with questions. You handled them exceptionally well. Uh, but ultimately, you know, you got to you got to deal with you got to deal with the sustainability of the pasta dishes. So makes sense. Appreciate it. All right, let's move on to our final match of the day. We have Emily versus Perk. Emily, bro, I'm, I'm terrified. <laughs> Emily, you get the opening. All right, we're gonna follow um, some flow here from last year. We're gonna give you some tortellini facts. We're gonna tell you why tortellini is badass, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about what I think Perk might attack me on. Okay. <laughs> so we we'll hit you with the facts. Um, tortellini. I think Dayton's got a picture. He's gonna pull up. Bring shape pasta stuff. The only stuffed pasta here in this uh, podcast today. But usually a mixture of cheese or meat varieties, either or. The name tortellini translates to small tortelli. 
Um, and tortelli is a different kind of pasta that translates to little pies. So basically, tortellini is a small little pie. Um, delicious. That's all I have to say. Um, its brethren pasta is tortelloni. Difference there, one letter. Um, it's very similar, but larger, hence the difference name. I think the I means little, the O means larger. Um, but this has no hole, and it's usually only stuffed with cheese. So that's tortelloni. Uh, for the, you know, reasons I'm talking about here, they're basically the same. Um, tortellini, though, was invented around 1570 in the Emilia Romana, northern coastal Italy. So not thousands of years old. You know, it's no spaghetti. Is quite a few hundred years old. Um, cheeses typically found. Some of our favorites here: ricotta, mozzarella, romano, um, botania. Cheeses, the meats: um, pork, prosciutto, and chicken. Usually stay away from um, beef in these types of pastas. So let's talk about why tortellini is badass. Um, probably one of the, my favorite, the best of the pasta to talk about today, in my opinion. Um, commonly referred to, although I've never heard it, um, the navel pasta a.k.a. belly button, right? So basically, tortellini resembles the life source of the human body, which I can't say anything better about that, um, the thing that gives you life, this pasta is named after. There's a story called The Legend of Tortellini, and if you guys have heard of it, but the legend has it, according to Wikipedia and Borelli.com, is that the shape of the pasta was inspired by Venus, the Roman goddess of beauty. So basically, after some battle um, in Emilia Romana, of Italy, Zeus and Venus are hanging out at, at this tavern after this big battle. They're weary, they're drunk, they decide to share a room together. Well, this raises some concerns in the tavern of what's going on, you know, to god, goddess, like sharing a room together. Um, so this captivated, as the website says, but I would call pervy innkeeper, um, <laughs> this room to creep on them, but all he can see through the keyhole is Venus's belly button. He's so spellbound or turned on that he ran to the kitchen, created this pasta to resemble the beauty that he saw through that keyhole. Kind of skeevy, but having a medieval legend origin story compared to every other pasta here today, I think, is very badass. Um, moving on, uh, like a few other pastas here, tortellini is versatile. Any sauce, any vehicle, fork or knife, any type of serving spoon, you're good with tortellini. Um, it can be eaten warm in a soup, um, in any pasta dish. Uh, not many pastas go well in soup. I know Joseph talked about it a little bit, but usually, especially in chili soups and stuff like that, you stay away from pasta. Tortellini, tortellini soup, where it's at. Um, not my favorite dish, but you can go with cold pasta, too. They're good for pasta salads um, as well. Tortellini can be a main dish or a side dish, unlike a few pastas here tonight, and the one we'll be talking about soon, penne. Penne is no good alone, but tortellini can be your main dish of the night, um, especially with a very good sauce. Um, it can be fresh and homemade, industry packed, um, but it doesn't have to be, right? It could be dried, um, refrigerated, and it can be frozen. So this pasta can be really specific to anything you need. College student like myself, I got a frozen bag in the fridge, takes three minutes to heat up, that's all I need. Uh, it's a good pasta. I mean, no lasagna, right? But it's still going to hit me where it feels good. Uh, compared to any other types of pasta, it actually can be made at home fairly easily. I mean, it's no knife to the spaghetti, but uh, we don't need any special vehicles for it. Kind of just fold it up. Not that, you know, the easiest, but you can't really make penne at home, so just stay away from that one. And the last badass category here is there's so many different types. I mean, we got your tricolor, got your cheese lovers, chicken cheese, spinach and cheese, roasted tomato, and a few others on this website I found listing out all the different tortellinis. Uh, the last category I have here is ways Kirk might try to undermine tortellini. <laughs> Get ahead of it at the get-go. Um, you're probably going to say it's too expensive, which compared to penne, you're right. Uh, the box is maybe a couple more dollars, but false. For under $3, you can get an average of five servings and 60 grams of protein. Your typical penne is not doing that for you. Um, you might say it's too much effort, you know, fancy cheeses, extra spinach, prosciutto, too much for your fanciness. But false. You get that little bag, three minutes, boil it, boom, 
done. That's all I need. I could do it with no sauce if I wanted, because like I said, I'm kind of lazy right now. <laughs> um, and then the other thing I think Dayton could pull out, because, uh, you know, he's a vegan, too much cheese, right? This this is exclusive to a cheese. As a Wisconsinite myself, I'm a cheese lover. I'm a cheese advocate. But false. You can never have enough cheese. Um, <laughs> <laughs> However, for those of you who can't tolerate cheese, those of you who don't eat cheese, um, they do sell tortellinis that are almond ricotta based, which is a, a cheese made from the almond nut, um, and that can be used with spinach for the filling. So I think you've heard here what, um, what our counterattacks might be. I've solved those. You've already heard about why tortellini is versatile, and you've already heard why it's bad ass. So let's hear from the counter of Penny. I'm a... Uh... Happy to announce that you nailed down none of my counter arguments. <laughs> um, and I'm also really happy that I'm going last because, good lord, did I go a different direction with this than you all did. <laughs> uh, all right, so I've got a penne. Um, Clearly. Yeah. So this this penne right here. <laughs> um, it, <laughs> this is the most intelligent pasta. Let me tell you why. Oh, oh, uh, okay. It is pretty much a geometry lesson, right? So if you look at it from the top view, it's a hexagon outline. If you look at it from the side view, it's a parallelogon, uh, which also makes it uh, a perfect tessellation. Fun fact for you. Okay, and okay. if you look down the barrel, it's a circle. So you like each axis, it's a whole different shape. It's like, <laughs> like you could be a dumbass and pick like lasagna. Which is, just, which is just flat, but you could even be even uh, a worse argument and pick a lumpy ass, no shape looking pouch for your <laughs> pasta. <laughs> uh, it is also it is the strongest pasta available. Uh, tortellini you can just easy snap, but see penne, <laughs> I can't break it. <laughs> Nothing to be done there. <laughs> um, it also, according to or looking at the shape, right? It is by far the most aerodynamic pasta, <laughs> right? Because so it's got ridges, right? Which the ridges funnel airflow around it, and it also it's not just a tube; it's got the points. Um, actually, the original design for penne was modeled after the Hyperloop, mm. um, and these points here they they break the wind perfectly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, and then uh, another thing about the, this, the shape of this pasta is just so fantastic. It lends itself to so many things. You see these these ledges here, right, on the ends? Mm -hmm. They're really, they, they're very tactical and very structural, right? So, like, if you were, you know, stranded, dropped on, like, a des deserted island, and you had nothing but a box of penne, you <laughs> could very easily craft a blow dart. <laughs> <laughs> For the audio listeners, he yes, made a blow dart out of penne. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right here. Probably eight. Uh, there, there's ten. Eight there's ten noodles. Um, <laughs> as a blow and, dart. and you might like you might counter and say, "Well, what are you going to use as the darts?" That's easy. The bones of your enemies. <laughs> <laughs> you, you sharpen them down mm -hmm. uh, in, into a point, and then just right. You can even <laughs> you can kill a snake with a dart, and then use the snake's venom. To poison the tip of the dart. So it's just the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> and another thing this structure is good for, right, is if you have enough, which you do, actually, I counted, there are 50,000 noodles in this box. <laughs> uh, you can link together some, like a lot of these in a, in a crosshatch structure to make yourself a raft. If you're near a river and you can, you can float down the river on your, on your raft, assuming that the river's not too warm. Um, <laughs> uh, and and yeah, that, that well, that's penny for you—the most tactical, most aerodynamic, strongest, and most intelligent pasta on the market. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it, uh, Perkins. Do you have any shots you want to get up, Luke? Uh, I do. Uh, so, <laughs> the, first of all, tortellini. A, a lot of the benefits, right, are relying on the filling. Uh, the filling, to me, is a performance-enhancing drug. <laughs> um, because you can't have tortellini without the filling. It, it kind of boils down to like, do you think that Barry Bonds should have the home run record? 
Because I don't. Because he did it while he was abusing steroids. Tortellini is just basically pasta on steroids, so it's cheating. Uh, <laughs> right, right there should should be just be banned. Um, but on, on that too, like tortellini, since it has like fillings, right? The the fillings spoil. So you you need to uh, you need to keep them cold or and or frozen, otherwise they'll end up useless, right? Penne? No, nah, dude. You know where they found the first penne noodle? It was at an archaeological dig site in Italy, right next to a dino bone. <laughs> penne literally predates human history. Would you say it's thousands of years old? <laughs> I'd say millions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> that's, all right. that's all I got. <laughs> oh man, I'm hearing a lot of laughs, not a lot of facts. That's all I'm saying. I, all facts. <laughs> oh, You're I, not I'll, I'll send my sources me. like Gabe. I got to put them together. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> Doesn't help you win. No, I'm not gonna lie. That's like some good bullshit, right? But like, you maybe appeal to the engineers, the groups, shapes. Wow, you get distracted <laughs> pretty easy. Well, you nice are an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was looking at that hexagon shapes. You know, wow. Um, and penne might be the most tactical, right? But like, if you're stranded on the island. You're not worried about killing your enemies. You're worried about fucking eating, okay? Like, I'm hungry, and a piece of tortellini has got protein, right, with that meat and cheese. It might go bad, but you're hungry, okay? Like, I'm just saying. There's when more protein. it does protein. go bad, you're going to, what, throw the tortellini at your enemies? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying protein per piece is higher than penne. You're going to last a little longer because you have the food. I don't know, man. Also, I just killed a jaguar. <laughs> Do you know how to cook a fucking jaguar? Are you gonna skin it? Okay, that's illegal. It's just like sushi. Um. You just eat it raw. <laughs> it's sashimi grade. Uh, cold and frozen. I agree. Totally, it's got to be cold and frozen. Also, it can be dried. Um, not with not freeze dried, but um, you can have it packed so there's no air in it. That's another way. It doesn't have to be cold or frozen in that aspect. Um, what else do I have written down here? Oh, yeah, what the fuck do you need aerodynamics for on your pasta? Shoveling it so fast into your goddamn face? Like, no, I'm going to enjoy this shit. <laughs> some good sauce, I'm going to enjoy it, not eat it and get, move on. You know what I mean? Um, but penne is basically your basic-ass bitch of the pasta world. It's Bro, been we got, described we got on the internet as average. <laughs> no. Cla- those are classic Penne is basic, standard, boring. It ranks last, 16th place in the world ranking pasta, pasta shapes competition. <laughs> Think are of there, some of the best foods only... you've ever had. No penne. Absolutely are... no penne. Fair. Uh, are there only 16 the... pastas in the world, though? Well, this is on the list. I didn't count how many pastas there are. I didn't think so. It's <laughs> 16th out of 10,000. There are 10,000 different <laughs> pastas. <Shit. laughs> Did you count how many pastas there are? Yes, yeah, I just read the list. Um, <laughs> I'm going to um, open the floor for oh, questions, unless you have basically all said, like... No, I have one more thing. So think of some of the worst foods you've ever had. Um, I'm specifically thinking about that Wads Dining Hall Chicken Parmesan, um, for those of you who are tech grads here. That cold-ass penne. Slimy, boring. You probably didn't even get the penne because the chicken was so bad you didn't want to make it worse. Um, <laughs> it's just a waste of space, so... It's plain, same, lame. Oh, I, I have a question. I have a question. Okay. All right. All right. This one, this one's for Emily. Hit me. Think about some fucking rancid ass tortellini. Okay. How would you rank that to, you know, still edible uh, penne? You know, if it's slimy. I've never mistaken care of my pasta, so I don't understand why you would let such a good pasta. If you're go if you're on a deserted island and you don't have access to refrigeration and you cannot <laughs> and you cannot vacuum seal things, that would be a situation such an we all face every week. Situation, <laughs> right? You're right. You're right. You're right. Wait, I also in in my argument tried to find death by lasagna um, <gasps> for my argument, but I did find an 
article of a guy, like a college student who had died in 2019 from eating pasta that he had let out, like let sit out for about a week. So how does that compare to the island? Like either you died by lack of nutrition or you eat old pasta and you still die. Uh, sorry, so, I need some clarification. Was that cooked pasta he left out? It was probably the sauce that got spoiled. I, it, right? was the gar- it was the garlic, yeah, that went oh, bad. Okay. I read the same article because I was like, what pasta is this? I need to know. It's like a dessert. It was like the garlic in the sauce that uh, that uh, killed him, apparently. Um, yeah, no, the, that, uh, that penny that they dug up in Italy, um, it's still edible. It's actually <laughs> in the, uh, Museo Italiano. So I have a question about the, the penny that they supposedly dug up in Italy. Uh, yes. The dino and I think this, this speaks to your other, uh, facts that were brought up in the <laughs> argument. Um, if you just go on the penny Wikipedia page, it clearly says, Penne is one of the few pasta shapes with a certain date of birth. In 1865, it was. So invented. I actually have this all written out here. It's <laughs> after a machine with a weak ass patent. If you look into this patent, you can't make pasta without infringing penne pasta, without infringing on this copyright. It's only been around for barely a few years. I mean, really. And the guy invented it because he wanted to try something new. They invented trenne shortly after that because penne was so boring. So, let let, let Perk answer the question. Yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry. Did Did you not get told in school not to believe everything they say on Wikipedia? <laughs> oh, Wikipedia is not a reliable. Wikipedia's story. got it's, it's not got, a reliable. It's got two citations for that. <laughs> yeah, those are made up. The links are dead. <laughs> <laughs> I got a fucking question. Yes, uh, for Perkins. So we took chemistry together. Yes, uh, in Mrs. Lee's class, and I remember a certain talk about heat. Um, we talked about the ocean, even though it's at a lower temperature than other bodies of water, it actually has more heat because of the sheer volume. I'm wondering if I'm on the third island. I'm assuming we're in the ocean. I make a raft out of penne. How long do I got before it starts getting cooked through, and I drown to death? Thirty years. I did the math. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's it plenty, temperature plenty thing. Time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's basic thermodynamics. I mean, okay. We we I mean, all we all did that problem in class. Well, you're a fellow material yeah. because I know you've done the math. Um, yes. Okay. Okay. I, I have, guess I, have, I have a question. So oh, in your your opening statement, you you mentioned that uh, tortellini can be eaten with any utensil, and then listed fork or a knife. I want to know how you eat penne with a knife, or tortellini with a knife. Like, I, I was told never to put a knife in my mouth, because you can cut your I, tongue. So I'm just very curious about that, that motion. I guess I, I guess I meant more like you could cut it in half type, type of thing. You know, Because oh, yeah, you, you said like or, or like a knife. Or, or <laughs> knife. <laughs> just, just, I, just, I just want to make, make sure hey, I'm if you had a sharp, a If you were on that desert island, and you had a sharp-ass pointy knife, you could stab a tortellini and eat it if you only have you know your buck knife or whatever don't you think you'd want to kill something before the knife if you had the knife if you had, if you had tortellini why would you kill something because it's gonna go bad in two days it's gonna go bad in a couple of days <laughs> <laughs> all right all right i think it's time to vote we got to vote everyone go onto the spreadsheet and put in oh man i'm sweating <laughs> Hey! <laughs> <laughs> We're seeing a lot of high scores from Perkins right now. That hurt. Misinterpreting the prompt. <laughs> Emily, you have always luck when it comes to, like a gimmick beating you in this tournament. <laughs> I but know. if I may start here, I'll wait, I'll wait for the final score here. So the final score, Emily 7.8, uh, Alex 9.0. Um, that is the highest we've the, seen so far, by the, the way. Yeah, yeah the for day. sure. So I want to compare... Perkins is style of argument compared to Dayton's um, because earlier I was I noted it was all spectacle no substance which I stand by because no offense Dayton but a lot of your rhymes are just direct hits on your opponent it's ad hominem dude I addressed that already he did he, he saying, made a rhyme about ad hominem basically you're just talking shit is what I'm getting at right it's the bullshit bracket it's <laughs> just the sling insults but Perkins <laughs> took the time and thought, what is some dumb shit that I can kind of base on reality? You know, like this, the fucking geometrical shapes 
the blow dart gun he actually like yes thank you perk that's what i fucking needed today fantastic I'm. I love bullshit. That's like my whole career. So. <laughs> it, it, it reminds me of Josh's style of argument. It's, oh my it's, god, he beat me with it though. <laughs> <laughs> and you just want to believe him because he just doesn't give a shit. You know, that's just the best kind. So yeah, mm-hmm. that was good. I I didn't see it coming. I appreciate it. The key is to make your facts as unbelievable as possible, um, <laughs> because then no one's gonna be confused and think you're actually trying to be legitimate thought <laughs> except the dino one that shit happened <laughs> i hey, we haven't heard from you today where where is your head at i mean so i had probably the low well i did seven and eight seven with emily and eight for perk uh i just didn't see pasta that way before 10 minutes ago uh and that was <laughs> and it was like everyone's talking about this you know sauce adhesion or whatever but then now i'm thinking I was on a desert island with a few enemies, and I had to choose between <laughs> penne and tortellini. I would take the penne. <laughs> so, uh, it's got some features, you know. Uh, so, I guess I have to give it to Perk. Uh, Emily has always solid, logical arguments, but mm-hmm. sometimes you can't beat the chaos, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, definitely not. I agree. Uh, uh, Tim, I'll go to you. You had Emily at eight, Perkins at six. You strike me as a man who likes the facts. Yeah, and, you know, I think if you're stranded on a desert island, uh, there's better things to choose than pasta uh, no, to no. strike down your enemies. You only get two choices. Get two pasta. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I just, I think it was funny, but I, if, if I'm looking for the best pasta, I'm looking for the best pasta they eat, you know? Sure. Mm. That's what it comes down to. Mm. Wait, but that's not the argument. The argument's the best pasta shape, not the best pasta shape to eat. Yeah. That's a good point, CC. We all assumed it was to eat, whereas for <laughs> yeah. we, we all really, really had a lot of really... personal assumptions and, and bias, and I think it showed here today. Um, um, the record showed, too, that uh, she would have won every other matchup with her score. <laughs> <laughs> she, she did have the second highest. Second highest score Kirk, of the day. That makes me feel so much better. Like, well, you're a, <laughs> an easy shout for third place right now, at least. Mm-hmm. That is true. Um, That's good yeah. enough. Yeah. For, the, for the audience, how we're doing it this year is we'll end up with a championship match for second place, obviously. But then for the, the third the third prize winner, it'll be the highest average score um, after all of the remaining matches. So Emily currently in the lead uh, with 7.8. Um, so we'll see what happens. Next week, it is round two. I'm not going to spoil the topic yet. You'll have to wait and see. Um, but it'll be, let me just do this cookie off the top of my head. Tim versus Joseph. Jacob versus Perkins. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Dayton versus Gabe. And Cece versus Emily. Oh, oh man. So <laughs> no one is happy. The next one will be recording at the same time on Twitch. So if you would like to watch live, um, it'll be at 1 p.m. Eastern. We're starting. And before I forget, I want to put a poll in the chat if anybody is watching on who is your fan favorite of round one i'm putting in the link momentarily so if anyone's watching boom there you go go in and vote and who's your fan favorite this week so see if you got to go it's totally fine i know you have to go to work um all right bye-bye bye we'll see you next week, see you next week. and uh yeah yeah so data has a bracket up right now so that's way easier than our seven um but yeah Thank you so much, everyone who watched and listened. Um, we'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Yeah.